There's not a crisis I've found yet that happens in nursing homes that CNAs can't solve. Hey, good morning. Welcome to the chill spot. It's December the 2nd. Woo. Woo. Already we're in December. Just a few more days or a month here of uh, 2019 left. Oh my gosh. The year has gone by so quickly. 2020. And you have spent so much time in Michigan I know. this year. I probably am going to have a white Christmas. It looks like we already had seven inches of snow there. Uh, in November? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah we did. It took me a while to get my car cleaned off, but I'm glad you brought that up, the Michigan uh, project, because uh, my goal is that it'll be a nationwide project before, uh, before uh, I'm done. That's awesome. Whatever that done means. Tell but, us what you're doing. Well, um, over the history of my career, I have often believed that CNAs were capable of solving most every problem that the nursing homes have in this country. Um, and very few people have seen what I, the way I visualize it. And uh, finally, after all these years, we're getting an opportunity with AmeriCare and Villa Healthcare to prove that CNAs can really um, change a nursing home. Um, and so what, what we're doing really, it's called the Enclave Principle. Gary's got it up here on the screen. And the Enclave Principle the word enclave in itself means a territory within a territory. So let's think of the nursing home as a territory. Okay. The enclave, the CNAs form their own department. They become an enclave within the territory, a territory within the territory. Okay. Or if you want to break it down even further, there's a big nursing department inside the nursing home. And so you got this big nursing department and now you have yet another territory we're creating called a CNA department where CNAs uh, are leaders of their department. We have a position called director nursing assistant that CNAs apply for when we come to the center. Is that a DNA? DNA. I like when that. you hear us uh, refer to the DNA, that's, that's who we're talking about. And, uh, you know, there's so many facilities across the country right now that are dependent on temporary agency. Oh, yeah. And I know that's And a our clients are no different. They've depended on agency, too. But uh, I just got off the phone today, as a matter of fact, on how much the agency has gone down. In the first building in Michigan that we got to back in June and started developing and implementing the Enclave Principle. Mm -hmm. And it's a 250-bed center. Uh, they were using $70,000 a month in CNA agency, and wow. that's down to under 20, I believe now. That's amazing. And um, it is incredible. And it's the CNAs who have really done it, and I want them to get the credit for it. Mm -hmm. We develop, uh, depending on the size of the care center, anywhere from six to 12 certified preceptors. So they take the NACA certified preceptor course, which is about a two week online course. Mm -hmm. When they have completed it successfully and passed the final examination, they become a preceptor. And those are the only CNAs in our buildings, that, in these Michigan buildings that are allowed to train a newly hired CNA. Nice. So we can manage the turnover. They have all kinds of documentation they have to do back to us as their training. So if I'm training you today, I go to at the end of the day and I open up my turnover management journal as a preceptor and I put in your name. I'm training Lisa Hout today. And the first part is all about the welcoming. So the welcoming portion could be two days long. It doesn't mm -hmm. just mean the first five minutes we meet. That's great. It is how have I welcomed you to our center, to our organization, to our company. Mm -hmm. And um, the preceptors know this because they've been through the class. They know the objective and the mission that this Enclave principle is all about. But um, another example is like oftentimes they'll say to nursing, um, get the falls down. We have too many resident falls. Mm -hmm. We have falls with fractures. Uh, we got to reduce the falls. Mm -hmm. So falls go down and nursing gets the credit. Well, who really reduced the falls? Our CNA audience knows who reduced the falls. Yeah. They did. But nursing got the credit. And I don't know about all CNAs, but I know many and myself. I never, I wasn't a nurse. So when nursing got the credit, I didn't really feel it was coming to me as a CNA. 
So with the CNA departments, we have the ability, we have scoreboards. I should have uh, given one to Gary so he could put it up here on the screen because our Care Force Elite, we do this under Care Force Elite, but it is a creation. Enclave Principle was developed largely out of NACA. And uh, Care Force Elite is the company that takes it out that we also own, NACA's sister company, Care Force Elite, is the, is the team that implements it. Okay. But it's largely all born out of NACA's laboratory, so to speak. Our 25 years boots on the ground in facilities working with CNAs and nurses. The other thing this does is allow nurses, licensed and registered nurses, to be clinicians. They don't have to chase me and you down to see if we've given our baths, did we do our charting, right. did we do this, did we do that. And the DNA is not just someone we select and go, poof, Lisa, you're the DNA now. We take the final two to three candidates, whatever we're down to, and the CNAs in the facility pick their DNA. Oh, I like that. They've got the final say. And who their supervisor is. That's great. Something CNAs have never really had say in, ever, historically. Right. So we're doing something that is a humongous transformational shift wow. in nursing homes to where CNAs get the credit they deserve for the outcomes. So the scoreboard might have reduced falls. It might have uh, improved uh, skin, resident skin. Yes. It might be absenteeism. Let's set a goal to get our call-ins down. Mm -hmm. Or needing that agency. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so anything that they got on their scoreboard, and we just allow them to have three at a time because mm -hmm. you don't want to get too many goals. Sure. But then they can look at the Care Force Elite app and see where they stand in relationship to their goals because burnout, most people don't realize this, but job burnout happens when you can't tell if you're making a difference. Well, that makes sense. Well, think about it. If mm -hmm. you're, you and I are CNAs, or you're my CNA and I'm a resident, and you got 20 of us, 30 of us, mm -hmm. 90 of us, because you move around the building, your job is afloat. You may right. work on a different hall every day. Because you might shift around, you've got to know all of the residents. Yes. So it's not just the 20, you know, you, we are largely, because of staffing, not able to have consistent assignment very well. However, the relationship between a CNA and a resident is so misunderstood in this nation. Hmm. Um, I never have said CNAs are the most important, but I say that relationship between the resident and the CNA is the most important res re uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. And so this is empowering CNAs to really, oh, burnout, that's where I was going. You know, if you got 90 residents, you know Joe likes a shower on Fridays and Lori likes the black polo yeah. shirt on Tuesdays. <laughs> and every day can start to look the same. You're just turning yeah. the wheel for your eight hours. So if you don't know, am I really, you know, a CNA, the only way they know how to know if they're making a difference is if a resident's able to, oh, sweetie, mm -hmm. that was the best bath. <laughs> or their families are, large, Thankful, are important yeah. because if they show gratitude and thankfulness, that mm -hmm. is a little bit of a CNA's way of knowing I'm, I must be doing okay. They like me. They want me to yes. take care of their dad. Um, but the best way to know you're doing okay is to really have the data and the proof that shows your good work, your skilled work, is leading to positive outcomes for our residents. That's so important. And so it is very exciting for me. Been talking a little bit about it on our pages and such, and people are starting to ask about it. We wanted to be able to prove it before. I mean, I knew it, but... You know, there's a lot of people in this world that have to see it to believe it. Well, we are from Missouri, you know, show the me. The show me state. I, 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 well, I was born in Kansas, oh, well, so sorry. I guess I, I mean, I've lived my whole life in Missouri, but I was born in Kansas, so maybe I've, uh, you know, I'm a sunflower, I guess, yeah. somewhere. But uh, the, uh, the important thing is this. CNAs can solve the staffing crisis. They can solve the care crisis. They can solve the fall crisis. They can solve the pressure ulcer crisis. Mm. There's not a crisis I've found yet that happens in nursing homes that CNAs can't solve. That's amazing. And they're our largest employee group. There's, no, yes. there's not as many housekeepers. There's not as many nurses. There's not as many dietary aides. Mm -hmm. We have 70, 60, 70% of our staff is made up of CNAs. 
and or caregivers doing, in assisted living. And they're doing they're 80 doing to the, 90% yeah, of well, the, the daily direct, care? Well, the direct the direct patient care. Mm -hmm. Yep. I have to be careful with that because I don't want anybody to think I'm saying they do 90% of the work. No, no. But 90% of the direct patient care resident receives in assisted and uh, skilled nursing is done by a CNA. And it's called ADLs, Activities of Daily Living. Okay. So a CNA is responsible for activities of daily living. And one of the excuses, I even used it way back in 1982 or three, somewhere around there, that management, management sucks. If they'd only hire enough help, if they'd only get us the supplies we need, we could take better care of these residents. And then I realized that, you know, it's not management. It doesn't matter if CNAs have 50 different managers in a year. Nothing about ADLs ever change. True. Activities of daily mm -hmm. living, right? Mm -hmm. So that's been something I've known for many, many years. And I'm full of gratitude. We just came off Thanksgiving. And I am still very thankful for the fact that we've got a company like AmeriCare Health Systems and Villa Healthcare. Uh, AmeriCare is a Missouri-based corporation with both assisted living and, and skilled nursing. And Villa Healthcare is out of Skokie, Illinois. And uh, they are such a progressive company. Uh, not very many people would invest the amount of money it takes to do the Enclave. So kudos to both of you very, very progressive companies. Steve Haddlestead, Richard Montgomery, Clay Crossan over at AmeriCare, and uh, Mark Berger, Dave Devereaux. And his team at Villa Healthcare have just really, they're believers and, and we're proving it. That's amazing. Anyhow, so I'm pretty excited about it. I actually have to leave here in a little bit to head back to Michigan. So Lisa's going to have the show while Corinne's out. We're still sending good wishes to Corinne. And, Absolutely. And um, Lisa will be taking over here and she'll get this spot for a while. <laughs> I, I wanted to keep the seat warm for Corinne and then Lisa will take it from here. And be with you guys each day on the Chill Spot or Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And she'll have some guest uh, hosts in with her as well. So yeah. we're going to do our best in, Car uh, in Corinne's absence to make the Chill Spot everything yeah. it can be. We'll carry on. It won't be Corinne, but no, we'll do our best. No, absolutely. So until uh, Lisa and her guests see you on Wednesday, uh, I'm Naka out. And I want you to remember that you matter. You matter.